If you see a lot of blurries, that's me. Take a good look at this little girl. She's seven years old. Her name is Annika. She's a miracle. She is a gift to us all. Everything she's been through and the strength that she has. Three days after she was born, Annika's health started to fail. Her heart didn't work the way it should. She was rushed to Boston Children's Hospital. Modern medicine kept her alive until the surgeon could fly Without back from born. Germany. And I remember being up in our bedroom and packing our bags and and just standing, just standing in our room and saying, "This just—it's not supposed to be this way. You're not supposed to come home without your baby." Adding to the shock for Allison and Adam, nothing showed up in her pregnancy. Annika was born, they thought, as healthy as could be. I was worried about what her going home outfit was going to be. That's what I was worried about, and, and now I'm worried about whether or not she's going to live. Operating on a heart the size of a walnut, the surgeon was able to keep her alive. It was then they learned she has Tetralogy of Fallot and pulmonary artresia. It means Annika has several major heart defects. After seven more surgeries, some of them have been fixed, but one small artery has not responded. Oh, the diva appears. Now that Annika is getting to be a big girl, she's asking more questions. Insecurities about her scar have become a topic of conversation. Whenever she would say, but mommy, you can see my scar. And I said, well, then I love that outfit even more because I can see your scar and it's so beautiful. Allison describes Annika as the perfect combination of princess and tomboy. Part of that tomboy side includes a fascination with superheroes. For seven long years, Allison has been trying to get her daughter to be proud of her scar. Nothing registered. Then one night recently, a major breakthrough. I said, that's your battle scar. She goes, really? I said, yeah. You know what? I said, Spider-Man, Ninja Turtles, all those guys, they all have battle scars underneath their uniforms. They do? I said, yeah, every single one of them. And I'm like, and you know what? You've been through so many battles in your life. And you know what the coolest thing about all these battles is? She's like, what? I said, you have won every single one of them. And she was like, I have? I said, so you know what? You're a superhero, <laughs> just like Ninja Turtles and Spider-Man. She goes, I'm like, so what's your name gonna be? I'm like, oh, you're hot girl. And she goes, I'm a hot girl. As Annika has grabbed onto that, the family, Adam, Allison, 11-year-old sister Avery, younger brother Ashton, try and live in the present, cherishing what they have now. She's just such a happy-go-lucky child. She's got some great friends, um, and just to see her bring joy to people around her. As you see her running and playing, it's obvious her life is not in danger right now. But the seeds know Annika's heart journey is not done. They are on a mission to help raise money for life-saving research through the American Heart Association, the leading funder of pediatric research. We owe it to these babies and these children that, you know, they didn't ask for this. We owe it to them to do everything we can to give these kids a healthy life. I read somewhere you said uh, you were just, you weren't a hero, you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. You did the right thing. Yeah. Uh, a, a friend of mine at church, uh, Michael Woodward, he, he, he said that. He's, he's like, you know, brother, good job. You know, wrong place, wrong time, did the right thing. And, and that kind of stuck with me because it's, it's not the right place. You know, I've heard people say it's the right place at the right time. It's, it's really not. You know, it's the wrong place and uh, it's the wrong time. But I remember when I went up for the six-month anniversary, when I went up to the finish line, you kind of have, a, well, I kind of had a flashback where I heard and almost saw what happened. Uh, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen um, because it kind of, you kind of relive it a little bit. Here we are a year later, almost a year later. Have your thoughts on what happened evolved or changed? Oh, well, I think you always be mad that it happens, um, but it, it's, it's, I can't say you're shocked that it happens. Um, it's happening every day in other parts of the world. And it's just a matter of when it's going to continue happening here in this country. I, that's the reality of it. You know, I, I just like the fact that, you know, as, as Americans, we refuse to be terrorized and we go back out there and do it. There'll be such a huge crowd on the 21st. 
not just from the runners because there's so many more running this year as opposed to previous years, but the number of people in the crowd, you know, 15, 20 people deep and saying, you know what, no, you're not, we're not going to be terrorized. And do you think that that will send a message? Because you know the eyes of the world are going to be watching that, that marathon. Either A, to see if something's going to happen again, or B, just to see how people turn out. Absolutely. They'll definitely be watching for those reasons, like you said. Um, and, I mean, the message will be sent, but I, I don't think we're dealing with people, I don't want to say that aren't intelligent, that plan these things out, because they, they are. Um, but I don't think they care. Um, they, you know, I, I've mentioned last time I was asked, you know, why do these things happen? Um, and, you know, I only had a four-letter word for it, you know, evil. Blake is an energetic little boy who until recently didn't know how to express himself without showing aggression. Getting it was difficult. My nephew, he needed help. He tantrums all the time. He needed somebody to be there and I was just there. Patty Bray and her daughter Amanda took Blake and his sister Jada in through Child and Family's foster program. It's what's called kinship care. Kinship care is not only relatives, but somebody who's involved with the family that may be a family friend or a contact from school, somebody that knows the child prior to foster placement. The kids call Patty auntie, but she isn't a blood relative, just a close family friend who was willing to step in and provide for these children. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be full of money or all they need is some Buddy to be just right there for them. All I did was feed him, dress him, take him to school, take him to the doctors. I mean, his needs need to be met. Patty is humble, but the impact of her love, support, and guidance are already changing these children's lives. Jada has developed leaps and bounds now that she's getting the attention and nutrition she needs. And Blake? I know you're hungry, well, just watch. No. And the one goes. I wanna, I wanna. Oh, you can't act like that. You have to have good behaviors, right? Take a frustrating moment, talk to him about what he's done to try to cope with that prior, what options he has right now, and then is praising him for it. You have to be patient. Patience, remember? <laughs> These are the things that are moving him along. It's not just being there. It's not just, you know, being present. It's being an active parent. A role Blake so desperately needed filled so he can be a little boy. Yes, bud. Uh, we, now we can get a toy. You're pretty <laughs> soon. <laughs> Just after four in the morning in the ABC6 newsroom and everyone is hard at work. Most are fueled by coffee. Lots of it. Is that a big part of what helps get through in the <laughs> coffee, morning is yes. coffee? Yes, if I run out of coffee, you don't want to know me. <laughs> We've been warned. We've been warned. <laughs> it's a big coffee mug. Brian, can we get a shot of this industrial sized coffee mug that Mr. Blanchett had? I mean, this. <laughs> Come on, oh, John, you work. Oh, my goodness. Is that what Thank helps you get going in the, in the I morning? I need it. I need it. It's black. Really? Yeah. Nothing. Is that how you get along with Doreen? Is yeah. that what it is? Now let's see what they do with all of that energy. Doreen is looking over scripts. Right now I'm working on Providence Road Giving. Alicia Astorita is editing the footage that will be shown. So this is where you decide what shots you want to pick yep, and this so is what it's going to look like? Yep, this is where I like view all my stuff. The morning show producer, Tiffany Choquette, who comes in at 10 and works till 7 a.m., fills the two-hour newscast with content while making sure everything times out just right. Getting first dibs at the story of the day. Morning reporter Melissa Randall under a tight deadline, piecing together her story, which will hit air in less than 30 minutes. I'll call up surface map. And way back in the Weather Center, ABC6 meteorologist Steve Cascione, who's been on TV in Providence for 34 years many of them spent getting up long before the sun rises. You know, depending on the weather, if it's an easy day, the forecast can take a half an hour to, to put together. If it's a stormy day like it was this morning, I get it even earlier, so it may take more than an hour just to figure out what the weather's going to be. Back in the newsroom, Matt is doing what? Actually, are you wasting company time here? Lot, actually doing something? A lot of my job is actually Facebook and Twitter, believe, believe it or not. So Now that all the prep work is done, it's time for the most important thing for TV news people. Hair and makeup. 
There are no professionals doing it. It's up to each person to doll themselves up. Armed with their game faces, it is go time. Matt and Doreen anchoring from the desk, Steve in front of a blank green screen, even though the TV shows all of the weather maps and graphics he built earlier. Plus, traffic with a silly Jim Stearns. Wait for it. There it is. The controlled chaos of what ends up on air can only happen with a calm control room. A director, in this case Eric Krauss, calls for video to play, mics to open and close, and camera shots like the one taking Melissa live in the newsroom. Well, good morning, Doreen and Matt. Yesterday was supposed to be a day of healing the city of Boston being tripped. Once the, the two-hour newscast ends, the news gathering process starts all over again with the morning meeting. 